here right now. Welcome to Washington. I'm Jim Angle and for Britt Hume to seize an individual's property. This case about a proposed business development in Brooklyn follows a landmark eminent domain ruling by the court three years ago. Correspondent Shannon Bream reports. In 2005, the Supreme Court sparked a national debate about eminent domain after issuing a hotly contested 5-4 opinion giving local governments the right to take private property from one owner and transfer it to another in the interest of furthering economic development. The backlash against the court's decision in Kelo versus City of New London was swift and sweeping. 42 states have since enacted some kind of legislative measure limiting the use of eminent domain. The scale of the response to the Kelo decision is historic. We've never seen this kind of backlash against any Supreme Court opinion in the last 50 years. In the wake of scathing criticism for Kelo, the court will get another chance to revisit the issue if it takes a case that centers on a multi-billion dollar development set for the heart of Brooklyn. The 22-acre site is dubbed Atlantic Yards, and developer Bruce Ratner has been fighting for years to level what now stands in the way. He's gotten the approval of everyone from then-Governor George Pataki to current Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Well, in, uh, in this case, um, our government uh, on the city level, on the state level, has completely abdicated any sense of responsibility. Daniel Goldstein is among the handful of homeowners still living in the midst of the site. He and his pregnant wife are the only ones who remain in their building. They've been joined by a dozen of their neighbors to fight the project, which Ratner says will bring luxury and affordable housing, open green space, and a new basketball arena to relocate the NBA's New Jersey Nets, of which he is a partial owner. Neither the developer nor the state officials who approved this project wanted to talk to us about it on camera, but there are very vocal supporters who say that what's proposed for behind this chain link fence will revitalize this area. And for proof, they look just across busy Atlantic Avenue, an area they say was once blocked but turned around and it couldn't have been done, they say, without eminent domain. There have always been short-term controversies, but we've been able to get through it and we have a much better city and we have a vital city as a result. Residents say they understand the concept and they'd actually agree if the Atlantic Yards project was about building a hospital or a school. If that were the case, I'd be unhappy about it, about leaving my home, but I would understand. But the idea of taking people's homes, mine or anyone else's, um, to bestow a huge windfall benefit on, on a developer, and that is the purpose of these takings, um, that, that's just unacceptable. Eminent domain supporters believe the homeowners are being used as pawns, giving a powerful public interest legal group another chance to have a say before the Supreme Court. Uh, they probably are getting free uh, legal counsel, and as a result, they've been left with hope and once the Supreme Court turns this down, uh, they're going to be let down, and they're, but they're going to get a check, and they're going to get their just compensation, and they're going to be able to move on with their lives. We should know by Monday whether the court will take up the Atlantic Yards case for later this year. In Brooklyn, Shannon Bream, Fox News. Next on Special Report.